welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here at Marielle. This is upsetting because I filmed this entire video and then I found out that the footage got corrupted. So we're here again. <laughs> I'm here again. I want to tell you about my favorite three makeup products from each category of my collection. Now this is going to be a little bit of a cheat. I'm going to go by formula. I don't know if that's what everyone else is doing. I can't remember. I've definitely watched a ton of these videos, but now I can't remember if people pick particular shades or if it's just like formulas from a brand. So I'm going to go by formulas from a brand because in my mental mind palace that is how makeup is stored for me also i put on these halloween nails um i'm about to reopen my shop again by the time this video goes up it'll definitely be open again um and it'll definitely be prime halloween time but can you take a look at these fabulous little guys oh my god so the um best selling nails that i had in my shop were actually just these star they were like clear nails with star glitters on them and i recently obtained a bunch of halloween uh Halloween products like Halloween glitters and I'm obsessed with them. Yes, I just put them on my nails between finding out that whatever I had on my uh, my SD card was corrupted and starting over and now I don't know how to operate anything because I haven't had nails on my fingers in well over like two months. So anyway, <laughs> this look has been recorded already. It was a shop my stash full of nothing new and it was all in the idea of like shop my stash for cool toned colors because a bunch of palettes have been coming out. So if you want to see this, it should be out already or it will be out soon. Um, and without further ado, let's jump into it. I gotta like go fast now because I've done this a lot. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna do this with as much brevity as humanly possible. We all know I'm a long-winded person. So we're gonna start with primer. We're gonna work our way through a full face. If there's not enough categories or formulas for a particular thing, I'm just going to skip it because I don't feel like um, padding out my video for no reason. Granted, that being said, I don't think there really were that many categories where I was just padding stuff. So let's get started. Uh, base, primer. We're gonna start with primer. I'm gonna say Jelly Pop Primer, um, Super Goop Invisible Unseen Sunscreen, and uh, Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. Okay, three very different base products for underneath your prep, you know, your prep step. Um, and so, you know, here's why. First one, Jelly Pop Primer. One price point is fantastic. $10 for a thing. I think one full fluid ounce is amazing. I think it's grippier than the Hydro Grip from Milk. I think, um, in terms of texture, I like it a little bit more because it is even stronger, <laughs> even more viscous than the milk version. And I think it even like slightly smooths out the pores. And on top of that, it has this beautiful fruity scent, which I like a lot more than the one from milk. And I think that the packaging design is better. It is uh, a squeeze tube with a pump, which to me is the best of both worlds. The squeeze bottle is nice because it compresses over time and you can see your progress and all of that is nice. Um, and the airless pump is nice because you don't get like back contamination by like dipping your finger into something. So this is kind of like the best of both worlds. It's a pump, it's a squeeze bottle, it's clear, it smells great, it keeps your makeup on. I love that thing. The next thing I have is the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen. Reason why that's great is because it is a silicone-based chemical sunscreen, which means it is invisible to the skin. So doubling as another layer of sunscreen. And then on top of that, because it has those high silicone percentages in the formula, it really, really smooths out the skin, covers up all of your dents and blemishes and whatever, scarring, anything that causes irregularity in the texture of the skin, it really just blurs all of that for you. And even though it's a sunscreen, it kind of takes down shine as well. So it functions to me kind of like the photo focus primer from Smashbox back in the day, but for the price of a primer or a sunscreen, and it does both. Last but not least, it's the moisturizing category. And for that, I picked the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream because that's the one that I've tried. Um, but you could use anything else. I think the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Cream is pretty similar. I think the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Cream is also similar. Uh, but for me, I like the Charlotte Tilbury one because it has a little bit of that thickness, that viscosity. Yet, when you actually blur it into the skin, when you actually rub it in, it doesn't leave your skin like tacky or sticky or anything like that. Um, tackiness, I don't really mind so much as greasiness. And it doesn't have that greasiness. Um, I just can't stand moisturizers that have thick grease, probably because I'm oily skinned. And so anything that has that like greasy layer, I just want to peel it, rip it off my skin. I want to use a blotting sheet, all that whole thing. So I like those three products for base. For foundation, we're speeding right along. The first thing I have is the e.l.f. Cosmetics CC Cream. So I don't have the right shade, but that doesn't stop me from really, really enjoying the formula of this product. So actually, you're going to see that quite a few times with the foundations. I'm just not great at color matching. I think I have a, a really interesting skin tone. <laughs> my complexion is weird because I'm a lot of different colors all over my body. Uh, so from my face to my neck to my arms to my legs, my legs are straight up cool toned. Like my legs are pink, straight up. <laughs> um, 
they're like literally salmon pink. I don't know why. Um, and it's worse when I shower or I exercise. Like I come out and I'm like bright fuchsia. <laughs> my chest is fairly yellow. My neck is definitely yellow and my face has all these capillaries in it and it's like definitely two or three sheets lighter than everything else. Um, and my hands are like white on the inside. So I don't, I don't know what's going on. I can never match myself. So I'm strictly speaking from a formulaic standpoint, not from a color matching standpoint. That, that's true for all of these cosmetics products, especially for foundation. Um, but I do like the LCC cream. I know a lot of people didn't like this when it came out. Um, maybe because it's the nature of the way that they marketed this. Maybe it's because there were no testers. But for me, I actually really like this product. I think it gives you a really great full body medium coverage. I would say that it's medium leaning towards full. You don't need more than one pump of this, especially if you... Um, aren't like trying to cover too 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 much I mean I think I have a pretty decent amount of scarring like I have pretty severe scarring along both sides of my face as well as on my chin and the hormonal you know the the post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation it, it's it's nothing to kind of scoff at it is quite difficult to cover even with concealer and I think this does a pretty good job on top of that um, it has a little bit of that SPF which is nice it's got that same really nice packaging so the airless pump but nothing's going in nothing's going out and it's elf so it's accessible you know you can get it at most places at drugstores I just think this is really great. I cannot wait to try the shade. I believe it's 220N, but it's a harder shade to find. You can find it online and you can find it in some retailers, but I haven't gotten it up to purchase it yet because I want to use this guy up first. But I really do like the LCC cream. I think that it wears a really long time. I think it is buttery smooth. The only, only, only caveat I would make is if you want to use... Um, it with a brush or a sponge and you want to have it kind of like spread easily I would either cut it with like a, a, a lotion cut it with like a SPF cut it with some kind of oil or something because it tends to be a little bit of a thicker foundation it doesn't want to spread very easily it's not very watery it definitely holds its body really well like if you squirt out a pump it's gonna sit on your hand in like a little firm peak okay it's like a stiff peak so I can find that to be a little bit uncomfortable to drag out like if you're really just going to use that one thing but as soon as you cut it with like a teensy drop of oil or like literally anything else it moves glides total totally no problem it's really nice the other formula that I really like is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation I have two again <laughs> not talking about color matches here uh for reference this is what is this shade this is soft ivory and this is nude ivory Soft ivory is a great undertone, but it's too light, and nude ivory is a great value, but it's too pink. So I, I still, I can't find anything that's right for me. <laughs> so I always do like uh, one pink and one yellow, one pink and one yellow, because I just, I'm not, I don't know what's going on. Um, but yeah, those two, uh, the colors are not great for me, but the formula is fantastic. I have both the regular and the dewy type. Both are great. Um, I would say the dewy one has a little bit less wear time, obviously, because it's by nature going to rub off easily. Uh, but still, in terms of like dewy foundations, I think it really holds its own. They are natural finish. So the dewy one, even though it is dewy, it's kind of like a natural dewiness. And the other standard version, it's like a dummy mat. You know, it's not super, super dry either. I like how watery these are. So they come in like a paddle, if you don't know. Um, you can get these, at, I, I buy mine at CVS. They come with like a little paddle and they're pretty liquidy. You know, if I shake this, a drop of this foundation is going to come down. It's not like one that you have to pump out and it's a thick cream. So part of why it's so comfortable to use is because it really spreads out quite nicely. You put it on the skin, when you use like a brush or a, a beauty blender, like a sponge, it just kind of like shears out over the skin. It's really nice and perfecting. It has a solid medium coverage and it stays medium coverage. So it's not one that wears away over time. You don't need to set it. Even the dewy one, you don't have to set. I mean, it's going to wear off if you if you have the dewy one and you don't set it and you're oily like I am. But you don't have to. Like, and, and even with masks coming on and off, I find that it doesn't wear off in patches. So really, really like that one. I think that it's very effective for the price point. I was really surprised by how nice it was. And the last one that I really enjoy is the Beauty Blender Bounce Foundation. Now, I know that this is not a popular pick. I am really sad to see that. I think they're discontinuing the line. Um, my perfect shade is 1.4N. It comes in a nice glass pump. It actually has a little bit of like this Beauty Blender spatula situation here for you to pump out your foundation. And it even has a travel lock for when you're traveling. These are little things. Um, I don't really think that they change the efficacy of the actual product itself. But it's nice to see that this brand is taking... You know, this is clearly a custom component, right? Like with, with the whole design and everything. And I, I just don't think that there are that many brands out there that are at the same price point. I think this is $40. I mean, $40 for a foundation is not unheard of. And I think a lot of foundations at $40 are still giving you regular, schmegular, generic packaging with, you know, nothing special. And once you get to the higher tiers, um, it is nice to have that little cherry on top. That being said, I like this foundation because, again, it is that medium to slightly full coverage. I think I like a little bit of a, a heavier foundation, but it doesn't look heavy. So that's the thing. It doesn't look like my pores are covered in anything. It covers up my acne scars. It doesn't really cause any issue. 
and it's a very natural foundation and it's long wearing as hell. It's very, very bulletproof. Again, you don't need setting. You can set, of course, if you want to, but it is just, the performance on this is great. Um, and I find that this plays really, all of these foundations that I'm, I'm listing play well with other things. Again, <laughs> because I'm tragic at color you know, matching, I have to ensure that my foundations match um, and can be really flexible to, to use with other products. So talking about sunscreens, talking about glowy bases, talking about like literally anything else, um, all of them have no problem mixing with anything else. So those are my foundation picks. For concealer, I've got three, and all three are from the drugstore, which is great. One is the Milani Perfect and Conceal, Conceal and Perfect. It's the, the one that came out with the two-in-one foundation. I love that one. Uh, actually, I'm gonna list all of them because they're all they all have similar qualities. I have a very, very favorite type of concealer. So the Milani Conceal and Perfect is one. The Essence uh, Camouflage, Camouflage Plus Matte Concealer is another. And the last one is the Wet n Wild Incognito Concealer. So all three of those. Hopefully I would have flashed pictures of here somewhere. Um, they all share similar qualities. So first things first, amazing applicator. So all three of them have what I call a flat doe foot applicator, which is really, really important to me. Of course, we are all familiar with the regular doe foot, which is, you know, like the gloss kind where it's flat on one side. Um, usually it's kind of like a slanted bullet shape. And then on the other side, it's round. Why? I don't like those. <laughs> I think a flat applicator is so much more practical because if you're like me, you're going to do one swipe here and then one swipe there. And I usually just want to dip into my concealer ones, do one swipe here, flip it around, do another swipe over there. I want it to be symmetrical on both sides. So I like the designs of both of these concealers and it was by coincidence, but I think functionally it must make a difference to me because I've, I've struck out <laughs> three separate times on these particular types of designs. Number two, tone for me is important. And the tone of a concealer has to be very neutral in a way. Like it has to be able to do two things. It has to neutralize. So neutralize acne scars, neutralize under eye circles, neutralize sallowness, but it also has to match my skin tone and blend into something seamless. And I tend to do concealer on top of my foundation. So on top of that, it has to play well as like the final step on top of everything. So it can't be something that corrects, but then you have to, to put foundation on top. Um, so the fact that all three of these foundations have great tones for that is amazing. Of course, this is for personal shade matching. I, I mean, obviously everyone's skin tone is different, but for me, at least if you're like me, um, those three have really great shades that blend into nothing. Three, <laughs> great coverage. So great coverage is important, again, not only because I have things to cover, but because sometimes I wanna wear this stuff with nothing else. Um, so it needs to cover the spots that need covering, but then it has to be sheer, shearable to the point where it doesn't look really strange and patchy on the skin. On most days when I go to work, I'm not always wearing a full face of foundation because again, it's laborious, I'm wearing a mask, whatever, yada, yada, yada. Um, I do wear a full face of foundation when I'm at home, like when I'm doing videos, for example, or when I'm traveling and going out for a day out or whatever. But when I go to work, a lot of what I do is just concealer, just concealer where I need it. So concealer around my acne, concealer on my chin, concealer around my nose where I get a lot of that like redness from blowing my nose and stuff, and a little bit around my forehead um, just because I want to keep everything even. But for all of the spaces on my facial plane that are not covered, it has to be blendable and it has to be smoothened out to the point where it doesn't look really strange and weird. And all three of those concealers have that amazing quality of really nice coverage that can cover what you need to cover, but not being so thick and so cakey that when you blend it out, it looks like you've photoshopped just one edge of your face and then everything else looks like regular skin texture. So love those. All three of them are fantastic. And the best part is all of them are under 10 bucks. Next, <laughs> under eye corrector. The best corrector, color corrector for me is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind. I like the one in the shade Brightener, I believe it's the pink one. It literally looks like a baby pink concealer. And I like it for multiple reasons. Of course, it's a color corrector, so it goes underneath your regular concealer if you're gonna use it. I use a very, very small amount. Uh, if I'm going under the eyes, I find that it brightens really well and it corrects that pinkness, corrects the sallow tone. Um, and if I use it on my PIH, so my scars, it also kind of, it takes away some of that like purpley brownishness. Now, listen, that's a whole other step in my foundation routine that I don't always do. So uh, yeah, ever since I've used that up, I haven't repurchased it. But listen, I've tried a bunch of other color correctors. I think they all do the same job. And frankly speaking, I think the Maybelline one does the job the best because it sets down. I think that my particular skin condition, the fact that I'm oily and I don't have really, really dry, wrinkly, sallow under eyes, I mean, I, I think that contributes to me liking something that's a little bit more long wearing, a little bit more durable. If you're someone who really needs moisture and you really need a little bit of that like creamy emollients, I'm sure you have your own favorite pick. But 
that's just the reality of my situation is I, I just don't really have um, that many under eye concerns. It's just like I have a little bit of dark circles um, and I have acne scars and you know that's what I need to fix and so the brightener shade really really does it for me. I enjoy it a lot. I love the price point. I love how iconic it is. Like everything about that product is just chef's kiss perfect me. <laughs> I really should buy, I, I should buy another one, but I, I just, I've been enjoying not fussing too much. So I haven't really tried to fix what's broken, but if you had to, if you had to ask me what my favorite color corrector was, it would definitely be that one. Okay, next uh, we're going to talk about brows and eyes and all that stuff. So for brows, I don't really have all that much to talk about. You guys know that I really like the Maybelline Brow Gel. It's a master brow styler and it's very affordable. I think it's $8 at most, at most drugstores. And it has kind of like a thin, um, precise side with very, very thin bristles on the spoolie and then one with a slightly longer comb-like side. And part of why I like it is the design of the wand itself. And the other half is the tinted gel, which I think is fabulous. Uh, in terms of pencils, I think they're all the same, so I don't really have a favorite pencil. I, I liked the, the L'Oreal one, the skinny one, if you really had to ask me to pick one, but functionally, I think they all do the same job. In fact, I'm going to say the e.l.f. Precision Brow Pencil, the $1 one, that one's my favorite because it's a dollar, and then I can spend the 8 or $9 that I would have spent on any other drugstore pencil liner on something else. So for 10 bucks, you've got a perfectly decent brow routine for someone who has uh, pretty much the brows that they need. So a brow pencil and a brow gel, I, I think the rest of it is is all accoutrement. I don't really think it's necessary to get all the other stuff, but that's just for my personal brow routine. For the eyes, <laughs> um, in terms of eye prep, eye finishing, and all that stuff, my favorite primer is the Too Faced primer, but I also... I don't really, I don't know. I, I just use it for longevity and I use it a little bit for pigment, but listen, I'm not the eyeshadow primer queen. I don't have like multiple primers that I use. I use one, use it up, and then I buy the next one. So the last one I used, I think, was the primer potion and I don't think I saw a single difference in the performance. So take that with a grain of salt. I'm sure the Milani eyeshadow primer is just as good. In terms of mascara, I've got three favorites. One is the Superhero uh, Mascara from It Cosmetics. I have talked your ears off about this already. It is a fantastic, fantastic mascara. If you are someone who has thin, short, stubby, straight lashes, the Superhero Mascara is your best friend. <laughs> it has terrible design. I've talked about how it looks like calculus, um, so I hate the way that it looks, but it is beautiful. It has this really uh, efficiently building formula. So there's something really, there is something magical in this product uh, because when you use this, usually what takes me three or four coats, I mean, I don't mean like coats isn't I have to wait for it to dry, but what usually takes me three or four swipes of the wand takes me only one or two. So it cuts down on my mascara time by half. Uh, no joke, like really, it, it, it's two swipes and you are full coverage, full to go, way to go. Uh, the volume of your lash, I'm not wearing false lashes right now, but the volume, the thickness of your lashes increases by like threefold. You know, the actual swipe of product on your mascara, on your lashes, the mascara thickens your, <laughs> your lashes by so much. And because it's so efficient, I think it can build on itself really easily. So you get length and you get volume and you get separation. And it also holds my lashes upright. I, I mean, I literally have never tried another mascara that has done this. So this is by far the holy grail. And I will be purchasing this in bulk, <laughs> like for backups, Black Friday, all of that, all that jazz. Um, a really close second. And honestly, I feel like it it can hang with the cosmetics because it's so cheap is the Lash Princess Mascara from Essence. I'm going to put all three of the ones here. They also have a waterproof one, which I don't recommend because you don't need it. I think that the regular one doesn't smudge, so it's perfectly good. In fact, um, I haven't ever felt like this has ever smudged on me. I've tried all of the different colors, and uh, frankly speaking, I like the purple one because the purple one has a curved wand, but all of them are nice. I mean, uh, I think the pink one might be a little bit thicker, like more volumizing. The green one has a straight wand, very, very similar to the It Cosmetics, and this one has a curved wand, um, but they're not different enough for me to care, and so I buy the one with the best wand for me, and that's the purple one. They're all great. I mean, they are fantastic, and for $5, you really, really cannot beat it. Does not smudge, does not flake, um, holds a curl. Again, it, it actually curls my lashes. I don't even want to say holds a curl because that implies that I've curled them and it maintains a curl. This literally will curl your lashes for you. And it's amazing. What I do is I just kind of push up against, I blink down on the wand. And I think that process of like pushing up the lash up against the wand, it dries like that. And I don't, I don't know how, and I don't know why, <laughs> because it's never happened with any other mascara of mine, but this does that. It's not as dramatic as a superhero, but it's it's fairly close. And for, for literally a, a quarter of the price, I feel like it, it's comparable. It's comparable. The last one is an honorable mention. If you're brave, I say the Lash, uh, the Sky High Lash Sensational Lash. What is this called? It's the Maybelline Lash Sensational Sky High Mascara. Okay, that thing went viral on TikTok for a reason. It is the most life-saving mascara you will ever try. 
it is lengthening without being extremely clumpy and volumizing. So it definitely gives you volume, but it doesn't give you the kind of really dark, dramatic, thickening, eyeline, mascara, you know, volumizing thickness that you think that is associated with volume. Traditionally, when I think volume, I think of something that really kind of blacks out my lash line. And ideally, it's not one big curtain of lash, but it does give me a little bit of that, that thickness. The, some, something about the Sky Hat Mascara gives you volume without giving you thickness and mass. Um, it's a very delicate, very elegant formula in terms of what it looks like on your lashes. It looks elegant. It looks like a mascara that um, classy, sophisticated people who do understated makeup would do while looking very clean and effective. However, <laughs> it is so effective at its job that you can't take it off. Like when I put on Lash Sensational Sky High, it, it feels like a two-day commitment. Like it's it's really like you put it on and you are fully aware that even though you do a double cleanse with an eye makeup remover, that stuff is not coming off for a couple days or so. And I think part of why it's so good is because the next day you're building on old mascara. So I you need to be brave to use it for sure because it's a whole commitment. You have to commit to really, really massaging that stuff off every night. Um, but otherwise, if you really just want something effective, that that's that's sure effective. That's very effective. Next, we're going to talk eyeliners. I've got one liquid liner and one pencil liner for you, both from the drugstore. Woohoo! <laughs> I'm learning something about myself because I really like drugstore makeup for certain categories. Um, eyeliner. Very important to me that it is black, um, that it is saturated, and that it is long wearing. Uh, I will also say that, you know, for, for certain things, I don't mind a color, but the priority for me is a black uh, liquid liner. So I will just say these ones are categorically speaking, like great across the board. First one for liquid liner, I'm gonna say the e.l.f. breakup proof, waterproof liquid liner is the best at the drugstore and comparable to anything else you can find anywhere else. Listen, I have done a black winged liner for probably, I don't even know how many years. I started doing this when I was, I don't know, like 11 or 12 years old, probably 11 years old. And I've done it like every day since I was 11. So I've tried out a lot of different liners. And of course I've tried the high-end ones as well. I've tried Too Faced, I've tried Urban Decay, I've tried Kat Von D, I've tried Steel, I've tried like literally all the other ones that, you know, Marc Jacobs, all that stuff. They're fine, they're good, they're nice, but they're $20 plus and I don't think it's worth it. I think if you're gonna go for a liquid liner and you're gonna use it up and you're gonna use I don't know, six or seven in a year like I do, you're really gonna have to do something that's cost effective. So for me, the Wet n Wild Wigger Proof Liners are fantastic. They have real nylon bristle brushes um, and they're black as night. They dry matte, so it's not that shiny vinyl look and they're waterproof. I mean, they're not entirely waterproof to the point where you can cry or get stuck in the rain or whatever and it's not gonna be bad. But you know, if you're talking about regular sweat, grime, minor rubbing of the face, it doesn't move. It doesn't budge. It's absolutely budge proof to the point that is reasonable for most people. <laughs> if you're like yawning and crying all over the place, I probably would steer clear of any liquid liner. Um, so I, I can't give like that kind of advice, but I have to say it, it's pretty durable. I mean, I would do gel liner if you're really like going to be crying and, and doing like the most with your eyes, but I haven't really had a situation where for instance, I've woken up from a nap and felt like really embarrassed that my liquid liner has fallen off, which sometimes it does. So I enjoy it not only for the price, but also the performance and the build, which is that bristle brush, which is quite hard to find. Honorable mention is the Physician's Formula Serum Liner, but that stuff is $10 or $12 and you don't need to pay that price. The pencil liner that I enjoy is the Milani Stay Put Eyeliner. This one comes in many different colors. I've got it in navy, I used up a red one, I used up a black one, and I used up a brown one, and they're all great. <laughs> uh, reason why I like this one is because it's affordable. It has a screw top, so I don't like um, sharpenable pencils. I just find that they're so wasteful, and why would you do it when you could just have a retractable? Um, it has a smudger on the back, and most importantly, it works. <laughs> you put it on your eyes, the color is true to tone, so if you get a navy, it is a navy. If you get a red, it is a red, and it doesn't move. Like you have a little bit of time to, you know, smudge out the edges, or if you want to perfect a wing, or what have you. But by the time that stuff sets, it's not moving anywhere, and it performs on par or better than a lot of the high-end mascaras. And it performs on par or better than a lot of the high-end mascara. I keep saying mascara. <laughs> it performs on par or better than all of the high-end eyeliners that I've used. Um, the only one that has held up to this is the Chanel eyeliner, but that stuff is like $30. So why would you pay 30 when you could pay eight? And I think that they have a great variety of colors. I, I think that the packaging is fine. I really haven't had any faults with this product. So yeah, that's a really good one. Okay, so uh, we've covered basically all the boring stuff. Now it is time to get into the fun stuff, which for me is eyes, face, and lips. We're gonna start with lips because that's the one that I feel the most confident in. I'm gonna go for gloss, lipstick, and liquid lipstick. We're gonna start with liquid lipstick. My favorite one is Revlon Satin Ink Liquid Lipstick, Maybelline Liquid Ink 
liquid lipstick and the L'Oreal matte lip stain. So those three, again, all from the drugstore. I didn't think it was such a drugstore B, but I guess I am like someone who really hangs out at the drugstore a lot. These are formulas that I have tried and collected different colors from. And I don't mean like I tried all of the colors at once just to try out a new formula. I mean, I purchased one or two, used them to death, <laughs> got another two, got another two, got another two, and now I have collections of them. Uh, the L'Oreal one, not so much. I think I only had like three of those. Uh, so that's kind of like an honorable mention, but I do want to tell you the difference between all three. So the Revlon Satin Ink is what I'm wearing on my lips right now. It's a semi, like it's mentioned, like a satiny formula. Like you can see a little bit of shine on my lips. It's not gloss, it's this product. Um, but it is an ink in the sense that it stains your lips and it doesn't budge. Like it literally doesn't budge. You can drink water, you can kiss someone. What you're going to get is a little bit of, yeah, you get a little bit of transfer. So I don't know if you can see, like there's like a single speck of dust here that kind of got off. Um, but you can still see my lips are glossy. I, I like I don't know. It's magic. It's, um, I don't know. It's witchcraft. I, I love it. It's fantastic. Uh, the only thing with these guys is they don't come in a lot of beautiful shades. I have, I think, six or seven, and I don't want any more, which is really sad because I think they only have maybe 12 shades total. Um, if they put out more colors, I would definitely buy more. I think they're missing a lot in the light range, and they're missing a lot in the dark range, and they don't have that many funky colors. I mean, I don't know. They're funky, but they're not flattering, and they're not cool either. They're kind of just like weird colors. So I don't know. I mean, if you can find stuff that you like, absolutely. I love this for me. I can definitely vouch for it. And these are pricier for the drugstore side. I think recently when I purchased them, they were $12.50, which is definitely more than I'd like to pay. But for the quality of the lip color, I have to say I, I would buy them again in a heartbeat. Um, the other one that I've talked your ears off about, of course, is the very, very classic liquid ink lipstick from Maybelline. Oh, it's a Superstay Matte Ink. Sorry, I keep calling it Liquid Ink. Superstay Matte Ink Lipstick from Maybelline comes in 40 shades. <laughs> I checked Amazon because I ordered five more today. And there's nothing, what else can I say about this that you haven't seen? Full color, full dry down, all day wear. I mean, you have to be very deliberate about removing this with an oil cleanser, but it's great. I mean, it is fantastic. I, I really, I've tried a lot of drugstore liquid lipsticks. I've tried a lot of high-end ones and between the color, the price, the range, these are just really good. I think a lot of people are using maybe too much of this stuff. You really don't want to glob this on. You want to do a nice fine layer. And I will say the finer, the thinner the layer you do, the more comfortable it is. And the range on this product is another thing that I really enjoy. If you do a really small um, kind of thin layer, you can buff and blend this out to be basically the sheerest of stains. I mean, look at how kind of blendable and soft this looks. You can see right through to my skin. There's no hard edges. There's no patchiness. It just looks like I've, it almost looks like a, a liquid eyeshadow, like a matte liquid eyeshadow that I just put on my lips. You can get something really subtle, like a blurred lip line. You can get something that looks basically like you've rubbed a um, lip liner all over. So it functionally, for me, it also acts as a lip, liquid um, lip liner. So I put a teeny tiny amount on, I smooth it out with a brush, and now I have a perfected lip line or like a base for everything else where I know nothing is going to budge and move. So love these guys. This is another thing that I have a love affair with. And the last one is that L'Oreal Satin um, liquid, like, liquid Lip Stain. I'm going to put the picture up here. I don't really know what it's called, and I'll put the name down on the bottom. Those are really great and comfortable because they are water-based. They're very, very liquidy. They soak in the skin and they tr truly stain the skin. You can build up to create a more opaque layer, but genu generally speaking, the reason why that one is really comfortable is because it feels completely naked on the skin. It kind of feels akin to like the wear nothing, um, but make your skin look better, kind of that deal. It feels like you've just applied a moisturizer onto your lips, soaks all the way in, but still creates like a nice staining effect on the skin, which, you know, that, that's what lip stain is. Um, the only problem with most lip stains is that they're very, very water-based. And so sometimes you can see like a little bit of feathering around the lip line. This one does not do that. So it doesn't travel anywhere. It doesn't smudge anywhere. Um, and it has just enough body that it can hang onto itself until it soaks all the way in. So I like that one. The only thing for me is, again, uh, the range of colors is just not something that I'm innately attracted to. I think there's just something about it that maybe I'm in a different season of life. <laughs> so I, I've only purchased like a couple of those, but it's not because the formula is not great. It's just that I personally am not attracted to those colors. Maybe they're just not unique enough or they don't add anything to my collection, but I can definitely vouch for the formula. For glosses, I only have two that I really like. One is the Flower Beauty Chill Out uh, Lip Glaze. This is the one that has CBD, and I actually learned that you can't buy this everywhere, so I don't know, like, it depends on where you're purchasing this from. Uh, if you can get this from the Flower Beauty site, I purchased mine from CBS. I don't know if maybe they sell them elsewhere, but this is my favorite gloss formula. It is really great. Um, I don't know how to explain this better than it just has this really nice thick body that 
can hang to itself and it clings to your lips nicely without giving you sticky, streaky, gloopy messes. And I'm not a huge gloss girl, so it's not like I have a ton of reference, but I do know that this is a really popular one because it is so nice. And of course, I can't I, I can't not mention, like, it's just aesthetically so beautiful. There's something about the component that just feels classy. It doesn't feel like one of those really dinky, cheap, you know, containers, which a lot of them do. And obviously, you know, we're working with a limited budget at the price point and all that stuff. So, you know, you can't always fault drugstores for not having the most luxurious packaging. But I do think that this one is fantastic. Next is the Revlon Super Lustrous Gloss Formula. This is the standard the gloss. And I wish they kept the standard square types because I think the square glosses are so classy and they're so iconic in their own way. But you know, this one, it's not objection. I don't have any objections with it. It's just kind of uninspired. It feels very like, mm, I wish we went back to the vintage one because the vintage one had a little bit of character. It wasn't super modern, but you know, it, it was iconic in its own way. It was iconic in a vintage way. Now, that's not why we're talking about this product. We're talking about this because I like the formula of this product. This is in the shade Indulgent, and I like this one because it kind of tones everything down. But from a formulaic standpoint, this is a really luxurious, thick body gloss. So if this gloss um, here is thin and lightweight and weightless, the next one is really kind of thick and uh, it's got volume, it's got mass. It's like kind of when we were talking about mascaras. The Revlon one, literally like there's a glob of it on my hand and you can definitely see like it, it's risen. There's like a little, um, can you see that little like drop here where there's like volume? Whereas the Flower Beauty one is so, so, so thin. And you can see that they're, they're both very, very shiny and reflective, but they have different qualities. The Revlon one feels thick and luxurious and almost like, I don't know, it feels kind of like a hair mask, you know? It's got that like thick, yeah, okay, we're gonna compare it to hair products. This one feels like a hair mask, like a, a really thick, creamy, nourishing formula you leave on, and it's got a little bit more body, it's got a little bit more thickness, you know? Conversely, it, it hangs around a little bit longer and it is a tiny bit mm. sticky. You know, it's got that tenacious quality about it which makes it so long wearing. And this one feels like a really comfortable wash off rinse off con conditioner. So it blurs out into nothing, it's very, very thin, it doesn't feel watery per se because it does cling to itself, but it doesn't have that very goopy, thick texture. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. Um, these two are my favorite lip gloss formulas. I've also tried the Fenty gloss. I've tried the Maybelline gloss. I mean, I've tried a fair number of glosses, but I tend to be pretty picky with what I like, mostly because I need it to stay on my mouth while I talk, and I talk a lot. So these two are the ones that pass the test. There's a ton that I've tried that are just kind of forgettable, and more often than not, I end up decluttering lip glosses because they don't really do anything for me. More often than not, I put them on, and then I feel like I need to remove them immediately because they're irritating me, or I feel like they're going to travel all out, uh, all outside my, my mouth. <laughs> and oftentimes, they really do travel outside my mouth. I physically cannot keep talking. Um, <laughs> my camera is running out of battery. I don't have space in my SD card. Like the whole thing is going to become a bigger ordeal than I thought it was going to be. So we're going to stop here, which is devastating because I feel like we just got to the good part, but stay tuned. We're going to do bronzer. We're going to do blush. We're going to do highlight and eyeshadow in a different video. I know it's a lot. Oh, and, and uh, regular bullet lipstick. I guess I didn't do that today. Uh, and we're going to do powder too, because I forgot powder. Okay. So remind me uh, to film that later. <laughs> because I, I just can't physically, I don't want to be here for an hour. I don't want you guys to be <laughs> sitting here and scrolling through this like it's a, it's a feature film. So we're going to stop here. Let me know what your favorite picks are. If you have anything that you want me to try out. Oh, and we'll do lashes in the next one too, because I think there are a few lashes that um, might be nice to share. Okay. Mental note. We're going to do lashes. We're going to do all the other things. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Guys, I cannot. I cannot be here for longer. I'm so sorry that I've talked for so long. I love you. <laughs> Let me know what else you want to see. If you've got favorites, um, check out the shop because the shop will be open. And I am very proud and very excited about the Halloween things going on. I love you. And I will see you again very soon. Bye.